out. Your next comic coming up to the stage. I'll give him time to set up his camera. Are we good? Yes, Everybody, sir. give it up. Yeah. Nice round of applause for Ryan Smith. Looks like I'm closing up the orgy tonight, folks. Oh my god, I love doing that so much. Like I love being the caboose in the in the train because you know that I think that's the situation where I really shine because like she's tired, you're tired, y'all want to just go home. She's willing to accept like much lower standards in order to just get you out of there. That is my time to shine when you are tired and you're willing to lower your standards. What the fuck is up, Jerry's? It's me, Brian Smith, known as the Mac Daddy in my hometown of El Paso. I am one of six white people from that entire city, and we all know each other because we all live with each other over there. But, you know, I recently moved to Wichita, and it's pretty similar to El Paso in a lot of ways. You know, people from outside of here always say there's nothing fun to do in Wichita. They say there's nothing fun to do in El Paso, too, but I beg to disagree, you know. I can think of at least three really fun things to do in El Paso. One, you can get your nice Dodge Challenger stuck in the sand dunes because you try to take it off-roading. That's always fun. <laughs> Two, you can set off what should be an illegal amount of fireworks perfectly legally because you step foot into New Mexico, where, by the way, it's completely legal to own and operate a, quote, recreational bomb. So that's always fun. You know, it's, it's true, look it up. And three, this is my personal favorite. You can get this shit knocked out of you by a 10-year-old with a piñata stick at any birthday party that goes on on any weekend within El Paso city limits. The last time it happened to me, I got hit in the motherfucking chest and I got the wind knocked out of me and I like collapsed to the ground. And I looked up at the sky and I saw Jesus looking down at me. It was his, it was his 10th birthday party. <laughs> Oh man, I can't tell you how many times that 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 hap that's happened to me. But uh, I am a proud member of the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, I'm I'm that one guy that helps girls realize they're better off as lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> a very underappreciated aspect of the community. You know, this this one time, you know, there was this one girl that I met, and you know, she was frankly not it, chief. But, you know, I, I thought I dodged a bullet, you know, like not, you know, being in a relationship with her. But then I felt bad because I have her on Snapchat and I saw that that bullet that I dodged hit some poor lesbian in Houston, Texas. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not easy being being part of the community, but I, I, I do my duty. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, on, on the real, though. No lie, no lie, no lie, yeah, yeah. I've been single for like two plus years at this point. And, you know, I like to say I'm sober from the most powerful drug on earth, love, because it sounds better than saying I've been single for over two years. But, you know, through literal years of like self-psychoanalysis, you know, lots of like philosophical thinking and a really crazy mushroom trip, I've realized why I'm single. It's because I really, really love apathetic sex. Like, so, preemptive no homo, all right? Like, no homo. So th this is this is what I really love. Like, pretend I'm the, the woman, and this over here is me. Like, you know, just going like this, looking away, like, <sighs> you know, like, she'll pull out her phone, too, while she's doing it, pretend this is the phone. She's just looking at it looking at the phone, going, do, doing her duty, but it's like, it's her job. Like, oh man, I love that so much. Like, don't make, don't make eye contact with me. Oh, yeah, be completely dismissive. Yeah, treat me like I'm a chore that you don't want to do, baby. Oh man, I love that so much. I'm kind of fucked, I think. But, um, you know, it, it, really, it really do be hard out there, folks. Uh, you know, I just recently turned... 25 and you know I noticed right around then I noticed my hair was starting to thin I'm like oh man you know I used to make fun of people being like bald as fuck but now I'm now that I'm experiencing like one iota of that I'm like oh no like bald people are people too like they have, they have rights 
It's like, where, where's my, where's my road game? Where's my $250 a month keep subscription? I need to keep my hair. It actually makes me look like I'm 5'7". Come on. Like, <laughs> but anyway, like, I had my first, like, real existential crisis uh, a couple weeks ago. It was at the Dillon's right over there, and it was in the cereal section. Like, I was just walking around, you know, looking like, I, you know, what cereal do I want? I saw some grape nuts, and I thought, hmm, those shits sound tasty. And that's when I knew my inner child was officially dead. And you might be asking, like, what, what's the significance of grape, grape nuts? Thomas, back there, our one audience member, by the way, thank you so much for sticking around and putting yeah. up with us. Give him a round of applause over there. It takes a strong stomach to tolerate all this cringe. But Thomas, <laughs> when you were growing up, what was your favorite cereal when you were a kid? Uh, Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch, cool. Uh, Shane, what was your favorite cereal when you were a kid? Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes, cool. And Gabe, what was yours? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. See, all those are like tasty, sugary cereals. Like if you're getting up to watch cartoons at like 7 a.m. on a Saturday, you want like a big ass bowl of that. Like what kid? wakes up in the morning and thinks, hmm, I want a bowl of cardboard with milk on it because that's what great nuts are. That's the type of meal you eat when you're fucking 40, your prostate's enlarged, you can't fucking come, you can't bust a nut, and you still have to go to your fucking job that you hate, come home to a wife who's like an absolute shrew, you know, who's popped out a couple of little fucking demons that just run around. That's the type of meal that you eat when your life is like miserable, but... That's just part of getting older, folks. My name is Ryan Smith. Subscribe to me on YouTube, Crime College YT. And uh, that's it, folks. See ya.